and this is Rome, and we are back with some more Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. Now, let me talk you through the basic premise here, and then I'm going to go away picture wise, and we'll jump into the game. Uh, in a couple weeks, maybe three weeks, we've got a new DLC coming out from Mech Warrior 5. Um, it is going to revolve around Rassel Hag's um, war. Um, I've already forgotten the name of it, the Ronin Wars. Uh, they were given their freedom, so to speak, from Kirita. Hardliners continued to fight and try to keep them from pulling away. So that, that's the basic idea. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to do a series where we start in the Kestrel Lancers DLC. We're going to play through the Kestrel Lancers campaign. We're going to hopefully, if we have time, head north to Rasselhag, do a couple missions. When the DLC drops, what we'll do is we will start a new game in the new DLC importing our previous save. The dates actually should be pretty close, um, I think, all things considered, from the ending of from where we end to where we jump into the next one. Um, I just kind of want to see what the what the intro is. So this is very much a members-driven kind of uh, story. Um, the actual overall kind of how we we're going to do this, that was all suggested by members. Uh, we are going to be calling this, I am going to be calling this, you call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it the Trondheim 9. Uh, because we've got nine. Uh, we've got seven members and myself for eight, and we've got the Mech Mama herself for nine. Our basic story is that, you know, father and son both got killed in an unfortunate ambush that nobody understands what's going on. Uh, she's managed to keep the whole thing together, keep the ship going, use some contacts, you know, like Goblin, people like that that have been out in the world that we know, and started pulling people back together. So this group here is a group that's all from Rasselhag ish space. They've known each other, they've served together, they've served alongside each other, they've, they've passed each other like ships in the night, all that sort of stuff. Maybe they were even friends at, at, uh, as kids together, right? They've all pulled back together, and so we have a very Rasselhag uh, kind of uh, cultural kind of lance here going on, and that explains why we're going to go north ultimately. So that all being said, I'm going to go ahead and hide hopefully just me. We're going to say single player. We're going to say new career. We are going to say Kestrel Lancers. We're going to go ahead and hit select. We're going to say confirm. That's fine. We're going to import data from this save right here. You can see I, I have a few versions there as I was trying to get it all right. We're going, to, we're going to jump through all of this because we don't care. We've seen that 8 billion times. I'm still talking to the camera, even though the camera's not on anymore because that's just, you know, habits. Right. OK, so uh, we're going to be called the Wallbangers. Uh, we're being named after Harvey Wallbanger, a racing bison. I saw actually race a horse in Mouse City, Montana when I was a kid. Um, rather than just call it Rome, we'll pick a famous bison and, and throw them in there. Um, now, I do have some additional logos loaded now that I don't think I had loaded before. So let me see if I can find something that I like more. So give me just a minute to dig through and we'll see. I'm going to go for this one, right? We're Kirita in background, right? Obviously, because Rasselhag is part of the Draconis Combine and, and Kirita up until they're granted their independence. Now, they're not happy about it, right? But but it is what it is. So we've got we've got kind of our rising sun kind of thing going on in the background. And we've got a big Warhammer, which you can, in fact, bang on walls with. Um, you know, you could also, you know, would it be completely, you know, out of character to see a, see some sort of Viking with a big hammer like that? So we'll go with that. Um, I like that. So let me uh, quickly, I will pull up a, um, now I think we do display. We'll see if it pops up. There we go. All right. So this is our cast right here. These are our members. These are their call signs. If they've requested one, these are the uh, the mechs that we're going to put them in. We'll see those mechs in just a second. Mods that we're running. Um, I'm running mod options. Xeno AI, Xeno Packs Optimize, Xeno Packs Art Optimizer. Simple map, mouse over, expanded logos, the Yeti jump ship animation remover, and better spawns three. And that is it. So a little bit of AI, a little bit of quality of life, um, and then better spawns. I fully expect all mods, for the most part, to be broken when the uh, DLC drops. So that's why we're not doing a whole lot of, you know, yet another mech lab or anything like that, because the mechs we have aren't going to there, aren't going to be there. So all of our mechs are are vanilla mechs. They're not all necessarily core. They do potentially come from other DLCs. They are all available in the timeline by 3026. 
So we are we are lower accurate as far as that goes. Now some of them may be mechs that were introduced in uh, MechWarrior Online, but uh, you know within the larger the larger realm of stuff, we're fine. <clears throat> so let me show you uh, the pilots as first, and then we'll kind of go from there. So uh, we got Ryan Weaver right here, um, the rooster. Uh, we do have a few little weird issues because we did create these characters using. Um... All right, so these are our, these are our members. We've got Ryan right here, the rooster. Now everybody's going to have a potential of sixty, and everybody's going to start at four um, for their base. And we used uh, a save manager to do that. So everybody's going to have there, and you got right here uh, a risk taker and daredevil since his youth on the fringes of Curita space. Mercenary life was Rooster's only possible calling in the Inner Sphere. Now we got Shuai Slingo. Um, Danny O, for those of you that remember his previous character, and that will be the call sign in this one again. Born on a Curita and agricultural complex, Shuai Slingo chose to pursue a career as a mercenary in order to get away from the tedium of everyday life. He has seen battle more than a handful of times in his short career. He hopes to be lucky and stay lucky enough to make some cash and get out. We've got Oliver Schmelter right here. Shadow. We went with an edgy, edgy uh, mask there, because, I mean, why not, right? Oliver was raised in a proud wrestling family, the son of FRR independence fighters, bolstered by his parents' fighting spirit. He takes the same passion into the battlefield, happy to jump into even the most dangerous situation. Now, these bios are mostly the default bios for the characters we had, modified slightly, maybe to change a planet, um, to change a pronoun, something along those lines. But realistically, this is this is the writing from the game itself. We didn't, we didn't custom write all these. We just custom edited a few of them. Aaron Baker, the Morning Star. Aaron is from Trondheim, and her sole focus was to become a battle mech pilot. She's an experienced pilot, having served with a couple of short-lived Merc companies. We've got me. This is the commander. This is the Hagar. Um, I made him as ugly as possible because this is Hagar the horrible. Um, and I don't remember seeing this, but this is a stock. This 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 is a normal stock pilot. That's not a modded uh, picture or anything. Hailing from Trondheim, the commander is pursuing a dream that many other residents of the Inner Sphere share. Whether Commander will succeed or fail remains to be seen. We've got Lieutenant Rush, long shot right here, growing up in the poverty of a fringe planet on the rimward side of Rasselhag space. Lieutenant Rush saw the mercenary life as an opportunity to see the inner sphere and forge a better life for himself. All right, this is Magnetic Monkey. Uh, I don't have a name for Magnetic Monkey. That is his uh, actual uh, uh, account name, um, not Peterson. Uh, but it seemed vaguely Rasselhagian, so we stuck with it. Um, growing up on the property of a fringe planet, uh, same thing. Did I have, end up with the same one? Did I, did I adjust them in the same way? More or less, more or less. Saw so mercenary life's opportunity to see the inner sphere. Oh, I forgot to make a, a change. I, I, it still says herself. I'm sorry about that, Magnetic Monkey. Assuming it is wrong, I'm, I'm just guessing based on uh, uh, my channel uh, demographics. Uh, and then Connor Murphy here is not actually Connor Murphy. This is Crash Bandit. Um, again, see right there. In the name of family tradition, Crash began training to be a mech warrior, but as he grew older, the appeal of life as a mercenary became too strong to deny. He cut all ties with his family and became a wandering mercenary. His ultimate loyalty is to your wallet, but he will nonetheless approach each job like a true pro. So these two, I didn't have real names to put with them, so to speak. So their call signs are their, are their YouTube account names, right? So um, that's it. That's the pilots. So let's go ahead and jump into the mechs. All right, the first we happen to have a jester. Now we haven't done anything fancy to this jester. Um, we do have a few weird little bugs based on the way we did this. We used um, yet another mech lab to add these in because they have a really cool um, F10 menu to add and do stuff um, that normally is kind of a pain in the butt to do with the save game editor. Um, it gave us a few weirdness, but uh, for the most part, other than a whole lot more slots in the left arm, <laughs> And probably the right arm for that matter. We'll see if those survive. Uh, it worked. So, oh, hold on. Uh, let's go. We'll just leave it there. So we've got the gesture. So this happens to be uh, Oliver's Shadow's mech here. This is what he requested. Next, we've got a Dragon Sidewinder. So this one is Roush or Long Shot. Again, this is a, 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 a member suggest required requested mech. Not everybody requested a mech. Um, but, but a few did, and, and those that did, we'll, we'll get to. So AC-20, medium lasers. I might change that from the burst fire. We'll see. It depends on how often I pilot it, because I don't particularly like the burst fire. We happen to have a catapult C1. Now, this is just a, a standard stock-ish um, catapult. 
Uh, there's nothing crazy about it. It's not a hero mech. Um, we've gone ahead and given this one to Slingo, Danny O, because he has not, not requested one specifically. Um, he has given us a lot of support on, on the weird esotericness when we were running into odd equipment and stuff in the past. Um, but this is such a solid base mech that I, I don't... This is a good mech. I One of my favorite mechs in the game. Uh, we haven't much messed with it. LRM-15s, four medium lasers. I think I moved some ammo around. Um, four jump cadets. It's just a solid, solid, great mech. Um, it is what it is. We've got a Thunderbolt 5S. Now, this one's Ryan's, uh, and Ryan did request this one. So, the rooster. Uh, we did a couple of little things. Uh, we dropped the SRM-2 in the machine guns, We re and we added four jump jets. So, he's got the large laser, some mediums, and LRM-15. A very versatile, all-around, great mech. So, again, not a hero mech, but this, this is the one he, he asked for. Now, this one's going to be mine, the Kintaro Golden Boy. I think pound for pound, this is the strongest mech in the game, in my opinion. Um, and I love playing it. I think I'm also the only medium mech in the starting group here. But you can see three SRM-6s, two SRM-4s, and two medium, and three, excuse me, three medium pulse lasers. Uh, I haven't done anything else to it. Um, we moved some ammo on the legs. Moved the jump, uh, heat sink up to there. And that's, that's it. But it is, it is essentially stock. We've got an Orion protector here. Um, this one is going to go with the Morning Star with Aaron. Uh, and again, this one gave us a weird little flakiness, but you can see right here, medium laser, PPC, Gauss, and an SRM-4 with Artemis. Um, and there you go. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Uh, again, pretty much stock. I moved some ammo around. Uh, we've got a quick draw, IV-4. This is a cool, cool mech. Um, I really like this. We changed the paint scheme a little bit. It's kind of a yellowish color, which I didn't like. We, I like the way the red and the black pop against just the pure white. Uh, and this one... We have given it to Crash Bandit. So this is his. Uh, he didn't request a mech per se. I just needed another Brawly mech. Um, and I'm kind of thinking uh, we kind of do something. Um, how did I have it set up before? Something along those lines. So Lance 1, Lance 2. So I needed another Brawly mech to go up front. So we went for this quick draw. Uh, medium, uh, again, medium pulse lasers, SRM6s, and AC5s. So not too far off from medium pulse lasers and SRMs of the Kintaro. So those are our two kind of front-long Brawly mechs. These are our second Brawly mechs, the Catapult and the uh, Shadow, uh, sorry, Sidewinder. Uh, we got one last mech, though, to talk about, and that is the Archer Tempest. This one has gone to Magnetic Monkey. Again, he didn't request a mech. Um, this is the one, uh, a specific mech. Uh, this is the one we've given him. So four medium lasers, two LRM20s, similar to the Catapult um, 20s instead of 15s, uh, and it does not jump. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, not not too far off. And that, again, that's why I don't feel bad about a C1. It is such a solid mech. Um, I do like the fact that these two happen to be really, really high mounted. Um, so you can P kills a little bit if you really want to. Uh, so those are our mechs. Those are our pilots. Um, let us go ahead and jump into what we got. We've got a priority transmission here. Um, Colonel Adam Sortek with the armed forces of the Federated Sons and reaching out on behalf of uh, First Prince Hans Davi, another lucrative offer for you and your merch company. I'm sure you've already heard Federated Sons have joined in an alliance with the Laren Commonwealth that will eventually merge us into a single nation, the Federated Commonwealth. The eventual unification of two very different great houses come with a share of skepticism and issues to work through, especially when it comes to the military, where AFFS and LCAF have for centuries had two very different ways of approaching war. First Prince Hans Davian strongly believes there are the best interest to work out as many of these issues as possible prior to reunification. To address this, we'll be hosting a series of war games across multiple Davian worlds in what will be called Oper Operation Galahad. The Federated Sons would like to contract you and your mercenary company later this year to participate in these war games. We are offering a generous compensation, along with possibility of future long-term contracts should your performance meet our expectations. Please let us know if you'd like to accept our offer. We're going to go ahead and accept it. Yeah. All right, let's depart. All right, glad to see you accepted our offer. Uh, you guys have to let me know what you think Galahad stands for. It's all in caps, so it must be some sort of military acronym. Uh, if you guys have a guess as to what Galahad means, you know, let me know down below. Uh, Hans David personally hoped you join us for operation. Not sure how much you remember your father's services to the Federated Sons. Not my father, but he doesn't need to know that. Um, Nick's Cavaliers once participated in the First, Provin First Prince's successful raid on Halstead Station back in 3013. Um, Served alongside a few companies from the Crater Cobras. Uh, from what I'm told from the Department of Mercenary Relations, you've done an exemplary job carrying on his legacy. For Operation Galahad, Hans would like to see your unit and the crater unit 
your unit and the Crater Cobas reunited to participate in one of our planned, that's just too much of a unit in one thing here, planned joint exercise with LCAF in addition to your standard payouts. Uh, also want to pay for all travel and repair expenses if we chartered a jump ship. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go. Now, this is still here because it's a storyline one, right? Normally, we will skip the jump jet animation. That's why we have Yeti's jump ship uh, animation remover running. But that's okay. For today, it is perfectly good. Got our little wall banger there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the cantina. Um, collect four medium laser tier zeros. We'll go ahead and grab that. 15 warrior units, we'll grab that. And 10 harass units. That all seems pretty good. Um, and we're going to go ahead and view transmission. Fix our cantinas. All right, we'll accept that. Uh, we're going to skip on that one for the moment. We already have a mission. Uh, formation of the Federated Common Health, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Fedcom Coalition forces will be executing a joint operation attempting to destroy a decommissioned orbital defense system. You and the creator Cobras have been assigned to act as defenders of the installation. Your task will be to destroy the invading coalition force to prevent the destruction of the orbital defense system. All right, let's go ahead and hit continue. Um, 200 ton limit. We might struggle with that a little bit. Uh, Commander, you'll be paired with Colonel Westrick and his creator Cobras. Your objective is to work together. Um, yep, yep, yep. We'll have to see kind of how we go. We've got five negotiation points. Um, on this one, I'm just going to go cash. I'm just going to go cash. We've got mechs. We are going to want to start collecting bigger mechs, but we're not going to get those mechs here. Um, we are going to need assault mechs by the time we finish this storyline. Um, so now we'll just have to kind of figure out what we want. Um, so if we go with... Ye uh, start with me, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm me. I'm the commander, right? I should I should jump out in front. Where, where am I? Let's go ahead and throw in... Oh, we might, we might be hosed. Hmm. Might have found our first bug here. Six and a half hours later. All right. I think I've got everything more or less fixed. We'll 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 see how it goes. Um, I've got all the characters rebuilt, uh, and redone, uh, which is fine. The negative is we're always going to have to run the commander, um, in slot one because we're not running uh, pilot overhaul. Now I did use a mod called fake ID to create the pilots this time. It does not allow me to change the voices or the uh, description, right? Last time we typed in custom kind of backgrounds and histories for them. I can't do that with fake ID, but it doesn't mess up the commander. Um, so the commander's in. I potentially could have changed the name um, of the commander, um, but I just didn't. I'd done enough work at that point. I didn't. I didn't want to risk it. So that's that. Um, we also had some issues with mechs looking a little weird. Um, the jester was one. Uh, however, at the suggestion of one of the viewers, um, <clears throat> I think it was Roush. Um, I could be wrong though. So uh, I'm. I'm doing this early the next morning. Um, uh, but one. One of. One of the members. Um, suggested stripping the mechs before uh, bringing them back in, importing the, the data. So that's what I did. I stripped the mechs uh, and then rebuilt them, stripped the mechs, turned off YAML, rebuilt the mechs, saved it, and then imported that. So everything is done. Um, so you can come in here and see everything looks like it should now. Now, there are a few issues, um, not many. Um, there's a couple mechs that ended up with a little extra tonnage. Generally speaking, most of the mechs have significantly more armor um, than they had in the past. Um, we had Pharaoh on a couple things. We had Endo on a couple things. Those those disappear. They're not they're not part of it here. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're pretty we're pretty good. We've got one mech that is a half a ton short somewhere. Here we go. Oh, uh, no, you're point two, point seven. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I fixed it. <clears throat> anyway. Um, I also picked up a Javelin. Uh, it was here for sale in the system. Um, we didn't have uh, 
uh, cantina here. Cantinas appear to be, interestingly enough, procedurally generated, um, because um, I've been playing with this for a little while, trying to get it right, uh, and uh, sometimes I have one here, sometimes I don't. Uh, we did not get one this time, but I did buy a 30-ton mech to help us make some of the tonnages, um, just as a filler mech. Um, it happens to be one I like. It's it's the Javelin with SRM-6s, <clears throat> so, uh, so it'll be a good one for me to run. So I don't have to run your guys' mechs very often, essentially is what I'm, what I'm aiming at here. So we'll see. So we're a little bit under, we're 10 tons under here um, for this one, but we're running uh, my Kintaro, the Golden Boy. Um, I don't like the Kintaro Golden Boy paint scheme, so I, I changed it. You know, I, I missed this camo um, by a year or two, um, <clears throat> which is good because it means I didn't have to buy a whole lot more camo, um, more BDUs, but uh, but it is what it is. Or, or ACUs, is that what they call them now? I don't know, I can't keep track of the acronyms. Uh, and this time we're gonna run Rooster. Um, in his T-Bolt, and we're going to run Magnetic Monkey in his, uh, for, for our missile support in the Archer. <clears throat> so that gets us up to 190, and again, these two mechs, all three of these mechs really punch pretty well. So we're going to go with that. Let's go ahead and drop. If we could have found a locust, I could have made this happen. I mean, I could have got us right in. I could have just by Richard Westrick and his Crater Cobras Mercenary Company. Be sure to assist one another whenever possible. The FedCom Coalition forces are going to be hungry to impress Marshal Sortek, seeing as how he is the commander of the Davion Heavy Guards and a good friend of First Prince Hans Davion. All right, we're just waiting on somebody to come in, and then we'll get a shoot stuff. Oh, I've got my arm weapons on one and two there. Uh, yeah, and then uh, all of the SRM sixes on three. So when I and but I've got them all on uh, chain fire, so I don't I don't crush my heat too bad. All right, I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go ahead and have Magnetic Monkey hang out here in the middle where he can support all of us. Uh, and I'll bring Rooster with me. New target, Warhammer. Target acquired. A couple big boys here coming in initially. All right. <clears throat> Oh, we're going for him for Okay, that's fine. He is most likely to die quicker. Although neither of these really count as tanks. There we go. He's pushing on. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get his attention here back on us. Not that the uh, archer is any sort of slouch, but uh, that is our that is our our support mech, not our, our front line mech. Uh, I did go salvage this time. I don't know that we're going to get enough for anything, but uh, but I did go with it. Oops. Let's see if we can get rid of that PPC.
There we go. <clears throat> a little bit more damage than I kind of expected to, to be honest. But uh, I guess we're doing okay. But look at the bar up top. We're fine. It felt worse looking at my armor, but uh, but we really haven't taken any shots in back at all. It's just that uh, right arm that's taking some damage. Now, pulse lasers obviously are going to be hard to replace. Um, so we might end up, as we lose those, swapping out for just regular medium lasers. But that gets us an extra three tons for potential heat sinks, um, which could be good. We get the... Nope, he's still out there. I think this is the last one. in this wave. So give me a second. <clears throat> Where is this guy? We may not be able to do anything against him. Can I step on him? Well, um... I guess I'll reload the mission. We'll be back in a second. I'm not doing anything. This is an actual buggy in the game, by the way. This is not... We've got nothing that should play with their spawns or where they come up or anything like that. He just... we got no map mods, nothing. This is just... He just fell through the planet. All right, first wave is down. It came in in a slightly different pattern, but we are back to where we were a second ago. Five things are down. We have the same three mechs, the same two tanks. I have gone ahead and posted the Thunderbolt and the uh, Templar up here, the Archer. Um, he's got a little bit of a wide range, though, that he's wandering, but that's okay. we got to come over here and help make sure that we protect uh, Rooster. <clears throat> so we'll fall back down this direction. Um, they both got LRMs. Uh, he's also got uh, the large laser, um, so he, he actually makes a really good kind of support backline kind of guy. Um, so what do we got here? We've got a blackjack and a griffin. Okay, griffin's coming in first. He's using the using his mobility. It's fine. Let's see if we can. Uh, Chase him off. He go down. I, I don't think he's going after us. I think he, he dropped. So I'm going to ignore him. For, oh, they got him. Uh, maybe they got him? No, they thought they got him. That tree is just perfectly placed, isn't it? Let's make sure that tree just goes away. Finds all the trees. Additional hostiles have been dispatched. They're heading your way. Okay. We got another tank over here. I'm going to go ahead and put some shots on it. Never mind. Somebody else got him for me. Uh, we've got this blackjack. Oh, no, they didn't quite finish him. All right, now, let's see what we can do here. Can I get to any of these? Yeah, maybe. Looks like you've got their attention. I'm showing multiple hostiles incoming on your position. Okay. Uh, we've got one guy in the middle here. I like how earlier they were like, oh, hey, you know, these guys are getting too close to my people. It's like a garrison commander. But this is supposed to be an abandoned garrison. That's the entire point of this. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's see if we can... Oh. Oh, I got opened up. Hold on. I got to get out of here. Target applied. Let me, uh, let me run this way. Somebody want to, uh... That guy does not like me. I'm gonna run away here for a second. 
Let somebody else deal with him. Lose the aggro. We've got a spider. We've got a trench bucket. I could probably take the trench bucket if I can get out of here. Okay. Ooh, they're finally going after that guy. Okay, fine. Spin back around here, see if I can help with that. Yeah, I got I got opened up there. What do we got left? Oh, okay, that one went down. Okay, so we're about halfway done. I just have to be careful now. That's all. That spider, I think we'll go after the trench bucket. It's an SRM, uh, LRM. Okay, so it, we just want to make sure we're in... There we go. Medium laser is mostly gone. Ammo explosion. Down he goes. Oh, we got an interesting little uh, physics kick there. I'm going to hold off back here. We, we know that guy's back there. Is he coming in on us? Yeah. Okay. Target acquired. Got him. All right. Phoenix Hawk back there. Let's see if we can get after this Igor here. Somebody did. Was it me? Those are all out of range for me for the moment. We'll loop up here. I'm, I'm okay with them being... Are you going to get in range for me? No. No, can't quite reach those guys. I think these guys have all their guns in their arms, right? Target acquired. Target destroyed. There we go. If nothing else, those guys dying means they're not distracting us from other things. We've got an AC. I'm going to avoid you, I think, for a moment. I think... Well... Other people have aggro on him? There we go, AC-10 gone. And he's gone. I'm going to come down here after this, J. Edgar. It's a little bit of an issue. Let's try to keep a side off to him, the good side, so to speak. Somebody got that one. We just have the Phoenix Hawk left. And then I think we've got this one. So that, that hunchy tore me up. But otherwise, I think we did just fine. I mean, Thunderbolt really, I mean, his, he barely scratched the paint. Magnetic Monkey. Uh, somebody got up there and went and had a go at him, but, you know. i be a little bit careful here. Spin back around, let some other people get a shot at him, put our good side towards him. The only side that still has paint. Is that it? No. All right, he's lost one arm, just not the arm that matters. Oh, there we go. Now he's... Looks like their uh, archer's going to take care of him. Oh, unless I get him first. There we go. Stole the kill. All right, we did fine. Leave it to those incompetent social generals to screw up the simplest task. That typical arrogance of the wirings will be our undoing. All coalition forces fall back. Nice work down there, Commander. Things got a bit hairy, but you managed to stay on your toes and come out of it. Commander, we have them on the run. Let's prepare a coordinated advance. 
time to teach these high and mighty nobles a thing or two about how mercenaries get the job done. Um, we can get a blackjack out of this if we want. That wouldn't be too bad. Uh, it would give us another small mech that would allow us to kind of fill some spots. He's mostly there. He's missing some jump jets. I wasn't really planning on getting another one, but I think that's probably a pretty good... Or we could go with the Locust to get us a 20-tonner. Um, now, you know what? I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to go for this one. That, that also gets us up to 10 mechs which is what we're going to need ultimately to continue on with this. But we want, we would prefer to have a couple heavier than that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, we did fine. Everybody did good damage. Um, Rooster didn't take very much. We, we left him, he didn't get to use, he was essentially Missile Junior up there, you know. He didn't get to use everything to full effect, uh, whereas we got the two LRM-20s on top of the, uh, the Archer. Um, so twice as many missiles. Didn't quite come up to twice as much damage, but you get the idea. Um, otherwise, we did fine. I took a lot of damage, essentially right, not quite to the face, but um, is what it is. So let's go ahead and see what the next... Oh, do I still... I still need to do that. Um, so let's hop into this one. All right. Beating those uncoordinated Highborn whelps back was easy to do with their battlefield infighting, but we should continue to press momentum against them while we still have it. With their pride on the line, I doubt that either Colonel Zax or Marshal Davy will make the same mistake twice. Next time we face them, I'm willing to bet their desire to beat us will push aside any grievances they have with each other. If I've learned anything from my years fighting for these highborns, it's that when faced with adversity, they tend to vastly overcompensate for their failures. Next time we face them, they'll most likely be pull all remaining forces together to beat us back now that we have superior numbers on them. What's the line from Dark Tide? Somebody says... Uh, discipline, discipline is how you win wars. And the other person says, really, I thought you won with something like completely overwhelming unfair odds or something like that. Um, but kicking their asses in a straight up fight is our mission, eliminating the commander Arden Sortek is if we take, if I take the greater hole of my Cobras and move on the command center's position from the east, they'll be forced to come out and face me, which will leave Colonel Sortek open for a surgical strike from your lance that provided possible locations for the coalition's HQ to Rihanna. I'll uh, take Sortek out and then fall back. All right. Jungle, noon, day, good. Oh, maybe we'll go for some more salvage. Okay. Give me a second to figure out what we're taking this time. All right. I think this will work. So we've got uh, me in the Javelin. Uh, we've got Bandit in uh, Crash Bandit in the IV-4. Uh, we've got Lieutenant Smelter Oliver in his uh, Jester. And um, we've got Danny O running our missile support mech, second catapult. Now, um, I originally was going to run with the Dragon. Dragon's five tons under it, 60 tons versus 65. I decided just to go flat, 220. Um, let's see what we can do. The Dragon is probably maybe the most fragile of our mechs, weirdly enough. Um, but it that AC-20 has a huge punch. It does still have the burst fire rather than the straight AC-20. Um, uh, I, I think I'd swapped it before, but it comes with the burst fire. But it does do more damage than the AC-20, um, but you have to deal with, you know, staying on target. Um, it's got Mask, though, and Mask is a little bit flaky. This, I think, is a really tough fight, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and we're probably going to take some damage. And I just figured replacing regular large small lasers was easier than trying to then replace a mask. Um, now, this obviously has some pulse lasers on it. That could be a little tricky to replace. But this one is pretty stock weapon-wise, stock weapon-wise, other than the AMS. Nothing fancy on this at all. Um, and so I think we'll be okay. Uh, we may have to be careful about swapping through, depending on how much damage that takes. But, but we'll, we'll go with it. Our new mission is to find and destroy the Coalition Field Commanders. 
The Crater Cobras will act as a diversionary force to draw the main Coalition forces away. This should give us an opening to take out Coalition field commanders. All right, there's a couple different ways to do this. One is to hit all of those, the other is to rush it. I'm going to attempt to rush it. couple mechs in here. It's not procedural, they're the same every time, so I think it's a cicada and a panther maybe? There's the cicada. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull him back towards us real quick. Uh, oh, and a Jenner. Okay, I forgot about that one. I think there's still a panther in there. I think we're just I think there's just three of them rather than two. Alright, there we go. We got some backup. Dude, jeez, chill. I'm gonna have no armor before I even get to shoot somebody. I'm a uh, toast already, really. Holy cow, I got no CT already. <laughs> you might have to just pretend you didn't exist for this final fight. And there's the Panther. Alright, spin around. Weird little spot for a fight. Come on, Jester, I'm not seeing enough shooting out of you. Alright, you lost your PPC. Good shot in the back on you. Down you go. You a tank over here? Good job, Eric. Run into close range and then, then shut down. There we go. Uh, how is that? Dude, why me? Because I'm the easiest one to kill, really. I mean, a movie should be shooting. Okay. So let's go ahead. Why? Let's go... Um... F3, F3. No, that's not what I want. F3, F2. F2. F3. Okay. Let's go. We put Danny right there. Now I might move him up. No, I think that's fine. Um, change my mind. Put him right here. Now we'll rush in. Oh, I 
I've wiped out a tree. Let's just stay on the guns here for a second. Do its thing here. We got over. Okay, you're over there. Target is done. Target acquired. I think we're doing okay. Is that tank still alive? Of course. He calm down here a little bit. Oh, there you came in over here. Okay. I mean, we could peek the hill here a little bit. I don't want to get stuck down there, though. Nope, not going down. There we go. Alright, now we've got him. Okay. Oh, I shut down. We're trying to take that torso off. So we can get rid of that gap. Is it Gauss? Whatever it is. Gauss AC20, whatever it is. I've lost an arm. Don't punch me, don't punch me. I shut down again, but he's so close to dead. He's so close. Finish him. Finish him. There we go. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Got him. I think. I think. Did he, is he going to drop? He's done. He's done. He's done. I've got an ammo explosion. I'm going to lose a leg. Roger, Rihanna. Thanks for the heads up. Cobras, let's finish this. What I'm going to do... I'm go this way. I think the quick draw will be fine. He lost an arm and a leg. So an AC5 and some ammo. And we're out. I think that's about as good as it gets for me on this one, if I'm honest, guys. Pick up a cicada, don't really care. Spider, hmm. I think we destroyed that too much. Let's go ahead. AC5, we're gonna need one. Oh, we've got a couple crappy ones, but we'll take that one. LRM10, sure, why not? Jump jets, sure, we'll take some jump jets. There's a really common collect items as well, right? So that never hurts. Um, some crappy medium lasers, a double heat sink. And that's it. Uh, we didn't do a lot of... It's because he got stuck in the javelin in the back. So that wasn't... That's not his fault. Um, otherwise, we're fine. Yeah. 
Uh, we have medium lasers, SRM6s, auto cannons, large lasers, some ammo. Um, plenty of data to go over. Long-term mercenary contracts set to open a year from now. Okay. Um, they remember how we worked together. Wasn't us, but we won't we won't tell them otherwise. Vriana's told them that, you know, we're all still the same people. We'll go for it. Um, interest offers a long-term contract, provided we recover and grow into a unit to field multiple lances worth of mechs. Okay, well, we... They want 10, that's fine. Um, we've already put out multiple lances in their interest, but that's fine, we'll be there. I think we're at nine right now. And there we go, so we've got a year to figure out what we're gonna do. Um, actually, we're at 10, because um, I bought the Javelin and then we salvaged the Blackjack. So we're good. Um, the only thing we are worried a little bit about is this, AC5 and the ammo, that's it. Otherwise, we're fine, nothing else crazy got to blown up nope we're good so i'm gonna end this one here i'll fly us back somewhere um i don't think there's much maybe we'll go all the way up there um let's see what is that that is two to four that's probably too low for us three to six seven to ten five to eight this is probably closer to where we want to be um 11 to 12 is probably too much I'll fly us, to, uh, I'll fly us to, to, to Gallison. I'll do a repair, and we'll be back next time for our next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe. You know, as always, the first ish episode of a series is the biggest one. Um, we're going to follow this through. I don't expect it'll be the biggest one for this one. The biggest one will be the DLC. But we're going to play through this. We're going to earn a little bit of faction up in Rasselhag, like I said. And then we're going to jump right into the new DLC when it launches um, for, for the Rasselhag uh, and the Ronin Wars. Rise of Rasselhag? Is that, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, we'll see you then. As always, don't forget to roam. Cheers.